Here, ladies and gentlemen, it's your brother Bolo V, and I remember to like, share, and subscribe. We got the man himself, the man of the hour, uh, Mr. Marky G, affectionately known by the support base here in Parliament. Um, him and other members of his team asking Mr. Christopher Tufton some very, very serious questions. Very, very important questions. Let's see how this goes. Firstly, I note on the, in relation to question two, which was to do with the doctors and nurses who have been trained under the PROMAC program and how many of them have left the health system. You couldn't give a definitive answer today, but you did admit that there has been some amount of attrition and so on. And I was wondering, my impression is that there is actually a fairly serious issue with a lack of doctors and nurses av available for these um, high dependency units. And I was wondering why the government has not sought to bring in specialists from Cuba Julius. to address this specifically, because there have been instances in the past where specialists from Cuba have been um, brought in to address those kind of shortages. So I was wondering why that hasn't happened in this particular area. The other question I have, or the next question I have is on, in relation to question three, to do with ambulances. And you indicated that there are 58 working ambulances across the regions now. And my question to you is this. Um, how many of these 58 ambulances are actually used to transport patients? Because we're aware that ambulances are also used to transport supplies and hospital personnel. So how many of these 58 um, is actually available for transporting patients who need to be transported? And the, in relation to question seven and your answers to that, which is to do with the the increase in maternal mortality rates, especially in the Southern Regional Health Authority. Um, my understanding is that it's actually St. Elizabeth where this problem um, has been concentrated. And I wondered, and you had said that there didn't appear to be any particular issue in Southern versus the other regions, but I think in St. Elizabeth, they, they, there was a particular spike, which wasn't seen in Manchester or Clarendon. And I was wondering if you could find out why what is the thinking as to why that would have occurred in St. Elizabeth, especially in 2021, where there was a, a notice of a spike. Um, also, in 2001, some 23 years ago, there are both. The, the maternal mortality rate in Jamaica was 89 per, persons per 100,000 live births. And in 2019, it moved from 89 to 163. Um, nearly double, and that's pre-COVID. A notice of a spike. Um, also, in 2001, some 23 years ago, thereabouts, the, the maternal mortality rate in Jamaica was 89 per persons per 100,000 live births. And in 2019, it moved from 89 to 163, um, nearly double, and that's pre COVID. And in 2021, it had moved up further from 163 to 211 per 100,000 live births. So, 89, 20 odd years ago, and in 2021, it moved up to 211 women, mothers dying in, in, giving, in giving birth. And the trend really started in 2019, where that spike to 163 occurred. And I'm asking, why is this so? You know, ProMac was initiate, initiated in 2013. It was a five-year... Oh, you want the volume to go up? All right, that means I have to adjust my computer volume again. Next stop volume will go up again. Hold on then. 250 Nako Jack, you know. Yeah, because sometimes them them website are low for true. I'm gonna go back. Um is actually available for transporting patients who need to be transported. And the in relation to question seven and your answers to that, which is to do with the Oh I muted. Oh yeah, I was muted, but is the volume for Marky G good? The increase in maternal mortality rates, especially in the Southern Regional Health Authority. Um, my understanding is that it's actually St. Elizabeth where this problem um, has been concentrated. And I wondered, um, you had said that there didn't appear to be any particular issue in Southern versus the other regions, but I think in St. Elizabeth, they, they, there was a particular spike, which wasn't seen in Manchester or Clarendon. And I was wondering if you could find out why, what is the thinking as to why that would have occurred in St. Elizabeth, especially in 2021, where there was a, a notice of a spike. Um, also, in 2001, some... 23 years ago, thereabouts, the, the maternal mortality rate in Jamaica was 89 per persons per 100,000 live births. And in 2019, it moved from 89 to 163, um, nearly double, and that's pre-COVID. 
and in 2021 it had moved up further from 163 to 211 per 100,000 live births. So 89, 20 odd years ago, and in 2021 it moved up to 211 women, mothers dying in, in giving in giving birth. Wow. And the trend really started in 2019 where that spike to 163 occurred. And I'm asking, why is this so? You know, ProMac was initiate, initiated in 2013. It was a five-year program, so it would have ended roughly 2018 um, and should have caused a significant reduction in maternal mortality, yet we had this spike, which started in 2019 and in intensified in 2021. And I was wondering, Minister, if apart from perhaps um, providing an explanation for that, if you could also indicate what were the rates of maternal mortality in Jamaica in 2022 and 2023. We don't have that data, but maybe you have it. And similarly, what were the rates of infant mortality in those two years, 2022 and 2023? And um, I see you're taking notes. I'm grateful for that, Minister, so you can answer the question. And I was going to ask, with the situations that are on the ground, we have non-functional ventilators and we have some scrapped ventilators around the place. We have some broken elevators for, for, at Victoria Mutual and Anata Bay. We have operating theatres without working air conditioning units at Bustamante, and I think you mentioned there's a situation there, and Savlamar as well, Public General Hospital. Um, I am told there are six out of seven anesthesis machines have broken down at UWI, at University Hospital of the West Indies, in this month alone. We have ambulances at Corner Regional that cannot respond to emergencies because they aren't roadworthy. We have broken CT scans and X-ray units at KPH. We have broken theatre equipment at St. Anne's Bay Hospital, and we have a lack of working sterilization equipment island-wide, forcing surgery to be cancelled because of unclean, unclean instruments and drapes. Can you indicate whether there's a central problem of poor maintenance of equipment within the health system manifesting in several ways and impacting patients across the island? Because those features that I just mentioned, which are happening now, so to speak, do indicate a very severe problem. And, uh, is there a comprehensive maintenance plan? You've indicated that there is a policy, a new approach to develop a maintenance policy, but what about the actual delivery of maintenance, the actual work that needs to be done to maintain, which has been sort of delegated to the regions, but is that functioning? Uh, you know, what I've said indicates that there are problems, and is there a comprehensive maintenance plan? And if so, you know, when will it be announced? And the last question I have is the HMFU. Is it only tasked to monitor biomedical equipment across the regions? Um, which entity in the Ministry of Health monitors maintenance programs for elevators, central AC systems, and major electrical equipment, such as generators and transformers, as opposed to biomedical equipment, which I think the HMFU, HFMU is primarily focused on? Those are my questions, Minister. I don't know if any of my colleagues have any. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of questions. That's a lot of questions because there's a lot of issues in the healthcare system. And let's continue. I'm just um, referring to the standing orders because I found that substantial questions were already asked and I'm not necessarily hearing um, additional questions being asked for clarity. So, so um, yeah, so I am going to as I said, opposition leader, I was just consulting the standing orders. Okay. So, Minister, you may now respond. I see the mic on the member from St. Mary Central seems to have a question as well. Thank, thank you for the, for the guidance, Madam. Uh, Madam Speaker, always appreciative. Um, and you're correct. Some of these questions will require a written response. I don't have some of the data that you've asked for. But just to quickly run through attrition and the importance of having the people you're right you're correct i mean you're not you're only repeating what we have said yes in fact a team was in cuba last week actually adding to the recruitment we have over 300 cubans here but we're going beyond that and i've spoken about that we're going to the philippines we're talking to nigeria we're looking at speaking to india no <laughs> that in itself ladies and gentlemen is a problem they are going overseas to look for nurses and doctors to work in Jamaica. Why do you think that is happening? Because the Jamaican nurses and doctors are going overseas to work. Why are they going overseas to work? Because they're not getting paid properly. So they rather get people overseas, which I know they got to pay properly. 
They got to find places for them, all of that. Right? They got to take people from overseas. However, guess what they did, ladies and gentlemen? This same government. Oh, and the, and the People's National Party benefited as well. Yes, they did. But this government under Nigel Clark and Adjonis proposed a 200 to 300% increase on their own money that they get paid. They work for us, the people of Jamaica, and they gave themselves a raise without our consultation. Where they do that at? But when we are supposed to get a raise, Example, the nurses, the doctors, the teachers, the police. There's this long deliberation. So all the problems that they're facing in the healthcare system is self-inflicted. All they had to do, train the Jamaicans here because they're more than competent. Get people from overseas to come train them. Come train people to train other people. Get Jamaicans out here that are experts enough to train the people in Jamaica. And pay them good money. The same money you would pay somebody to come from overseas to train them. Let somebody overseas that know what they're doing, that's a good teacher, train them. Get them certified because they're qualified, not because it's your friend or your family. Right? Keep it, keep it, you know what I'm saying, above board. And then that person can start training or those persons can start training Jamaicans because the people that train them know that these people are, they're competent. They're excellent at what they, they understand whatever, you know, details or technicalities within whatever uh, different training that they're given, they grasp it 100% and can pass it on. What is, what, what is, what is, what, why is that not an option? No, allow us to have a brain drain, not pay the people, but pay yourself. Mr. Ange Honus, Mr. Christopher Tufton, Mr. Nigel Clark, all of you. Man, listen. Um, uh, the CMO is expected to be in the Philippines next month. So, so we are going to have to come to terms with a reality that we face, which is that we cannot train our people fast enough for them to be recruited elsewhere. And the more specialized they are, is the more they are recruited and offered all sorts of incentives, which is why we had the Barrowin Scholarship to try and bond and hold some people back. Pay them! Pay them! Pay them what they're supposed to get. They will stay. Jamaica is amazing. Where else would you want to live if you have your money? These people could be living in a gated community, man. Doing good for themselves and their family. Secure. Owning their own licensed firearm. All that. All that good stuff. Living, living, living their dream. But no, y'all don't want to pay them. Y'all just going to let them go. And then try to try to shame them because they want a better life but y'all gonna take a 200 to 300 percent increase and tell us the jamaican people and not uh, the prime minister said this if they get paid better they will work better uh, they're not working better but they do they damn sure getting paid better and we're seeing a piss poor job from this man right here back at least for a period so we can't argue on that we have to join hands together and make it work especially given the new capacities that we're expanding on and cuba will be and is one of the critical areas but not only the the um the 58 ambulances and their their purpose we have given strict instructions that they should be confined to people movement now i cannot say with absolute certainty that there isn't some breach at some point because to do that would be to be monitoring them <laughs> No, ambulances, well, staff to the extent that they are needed to support a patient that is in the ambulance, but not beyond that. In fact, I will say, last week, as we opened the Adelphi Clinic, um, we also unveiled four maintenance vehicles, Toyota vans, equipped with storage and so on. 
as part of the new dispensation to transition from the temptation to use the ambulances to transport either equipment or, or people without a patient. And uh, last week we did that for the Western region. It is a discussion that will take place for the other regions. So we are working against that and I don't think it is very common. The, 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 mort, infant, the mortality rate in St. Elizabeth, I'll take a look at that. I, I can't comment. So I'll, that will be one of the written responses. But I know that the region and the ministry would have assessed and determined where the problems were. But I will be more specific on that once we get back to the data. Similarly, so the data on 2020 um, and 2022, 2022 and 2023, I'll provide that information also. Um, the data you gave 20 years ago as opposed to now, I think I have sufficiently or tried to respond to that. Some of that would have been the last few years, COVID would have influenced some of that. Um, the, the PROMAC program was not given an opportunity to prove itself because of the intervention of COVID. And I think we have to account for that also. Remember now, and we did say, some of those facilities were converted to be used as ICUs for persons suffering from COVID in an advanced state. So I think we have to accept that during those three years of COVID, share the life, there's guys. an share anomaly the life. in terms of the concentrated focus. I know for St. Anne's Bay and Spanish Town, we had more adults there than children, and that was because of the priority on saving lives and using those equipment. So I think that could be one of the explanations, but not necessarily the entire. Uh, I'll get that information. Um, the ventilators, uh, you are asking about Right. So as I've said in my response, member, we have to take a different approach and we are taking a different approach. So the HMFU is going to dictate policy around all of these things. And uh, that policy will filter down to the regional authorities for implementation with the HMFU providing some sort of oversight. That's the vision. Um, there's a lot of change management that's required in the expansion of our health facilities. We have to get people to think differently. I keep saying that modernization is not transformation. Transformation <laughs> has to take place up here. People have to... Hey, Blue, you ain't never lie. All I'm hearing is, you know, I don't have that information, but I'm, I'm going to give you a written response. Oh, you know, you're right, you know, but boop de boop de boop I'm still listening. You know, I'm, I'm just going to listen. Recognize the need for routine maintenance and so on, and that's what we're working on or working towards. It's not going to be easy, but the intention is to do that and apply it to all. Your final question, I, 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 I want to say it has a little bit of mischief in it, and I don't want to be tempted to respond to a question based on false assumptions. You gave a whole shopping list of all sorts of problems until I can verify that those problems do exist. It would be it would be wrong of me and misleading to respond. So maybe you can provide. Wow. 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 So this is what he does. He doesn't acknowledge the problem. Wow. I me with a written set of problems that you have identified. Um, but that long shopping list to me sounds more that embedded in there somewhere is some mystery for me to answer what I don't know. What I will say, what I will say, and it is a fact, that we have downtime all the time. Equipments are not expected to last forever, whether it's a motor car or it's a human being, if we don't engage in the same issues that we're discussing. So, everyone that you have mentioned here is a possibility. It's unlikely. Hey, who is this? Did I miss something? Aren't you supposed to have a maintenance like of your equipment? Like you're supposed to know, all right, so this equipment needs to be oiled every six months. It usually works to this time and then it start giving problem. So you need somebody to, to come and tune it up before and if something is happening in the hospital and they see something wrong it should be that it should be documented and then whoever is in charge of, of of the contract to come and fix these equipment when they are not working they're immediately called come and come and sort this out whoop -de whoop -de whoop. isn't there like a a program like that like you know what i'm saying like a system put in place so we're, we we should just accept that oh you know you know machines you know they you know sometimes they just break down you know what about maintenance we're talking about the healthcare system mr tufton ronice how you doing good to see you pat dub what's up i don't i don't understand this she says uh 
he speaks about the Brian Winter scholarship, which you need a guarantor to access. What a joke. Oh, that the same one I was talking about, that I found out about the other day. That is the one he talking about where half of the people that actually is qualified for it not did not get it because they didn't have a guarantor. Un freaking believable. Tough time. No, not ready for this yet. Him not have no health knowledge. Man, listen. That's man. I covered that the other day. Damn. Can I find that video? Let me play this in the meantime. What? Likely and not a probability that it will all happen at the same time. And once it happens, we try to address it. And I think that is the best that can be expected uh, as we work out the system to modernize it. But I'll provide the written answers for you for those questions that I can't respond to. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Mr. Mayor Freddy? Mr. Mayor Freddy, my name is Wesley Tucker. I'm your neighbor. Um, so, so member from St. Mary Central, I spent the time to take a look again at the standing orders and earth in me because I know for sure observing the mechanism we are applying in question and answer session is not quite correct. And uh, opposition leader, I was in fact correct. It is past 3.15. You would need to seek permission of the speaker for the additional questions that you would like to pose if they are not for clarification. And it would be the same for any other individual wanting to stand up to ask additional questions. It actually has requirements for both the minister responding, not to have exceedingly long responses, and the minister after 315 is also required for all additional questions to be sent in writing and all after the session the clerk is required to have those communicated to this to the minister yes opposition leader so member from saint mary central do you have any more questions for clarification or do you have additional questions you would like to put to the minister the both madam speaker thank you madam speaker i won't be long uh, Minister, you indicated that um, at Victoria Jubilee Hospital to get the ProMac, you sorry, the ProMac HDU unit functioning there, you are currently using um, Victoria Jubilee. Yes, you are currently it. using um, split units. Is it not ideal that the central unit is what is required? I found it. I'm gonna let this man ask his question, and then I'm gonna play it hired for these facilities because there's a possibility of infection. Second question, Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, um, I'll go back to St. Elizabeth, Please share Mr. The line. Minister, and you tabled this booklet in the Parliament in your sectoral presentation, which definitively indicated that St. Elizabeth was the major hospital in the southern region, which was having increased mortality. The truth though, Minister, if you interrogate this book, you find that all the hospitals in parishes such as Trelawney, in Portland, in St. Elizabeth, which does not have the facilities of qualified doctors, you have an increased mortality rate. Um, the min Minister, you indicated also, as a third question, that the, the delays for delay model that you mentioned in terms of accessing um, service which leads to increased mortality, maternal mortality. In most cases, it had to do with hospital care, which is um, tier four, 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 the fourth level. Hey, you did Andrew, indicate you in your doing? presentation what some of the measures are um, to be utilized to cure that. However, if that is the case, as you have mentioned, why is it primarily confined to St. Elizabeth then, if these are some of the things that are missing? St. Elizabeth, why is it, um, why do we have this increased numbers in St. Elizabeth? Um, and you're doing this as a general thing. Understandably, you're doing it generally, but it means that there's a deficit in, in St. Elizabeth, why we have these numbers. And finally, Yes, um, and Minister, um, the final question is, is the, well, it was asked already in terms of, of procuring um, specialized nurses and, and doctors. Go, go ahead. In the analysis of the responsiveness to the problems of um, uh, maternal
maternal mortality and so on, the different delay structures that you have. I was wondering in relation to delay one and the responses to deal with that, why there wasn't a, for example, in fifth form or sixth form, in why young ladies are not given some information around, you know, in years to come when motherhood ensues, how they ought to address these issues. Because, yeah, antenatal care and, and, and so on, because it seems to me that that would be a captive audience um, who would be receptive to learning and could carry the, that information forward, even into their own communities and for their own benefit later on. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, Madam, Madam Speaker, thank, thank the members for that. So <clears throat> let me be quick on this. The, 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 the first question raised by the member from the parish of St. Mary, the, the lovely parish of St. Mary, uh, you're right, a central unit is the desired position and split units do have the potential higher risk. And in fact, there's a debate taking place in what Victoria Jubilee around that, in that some of the doctors are very uh, uncomfortable. I am uncomfortable, but I, I, I have suggested to them, to the team, that they should find a way to make it work until we can get the ideal with special provisions if necessary for the cleaning and so on. Now, I know there's a risk, like everything else, but we have a problem in this country with our service, our equipment service providers. And in fact, I have given instructions to the extent that persons have service contracts and are not fulfilling them, and I won't go into specifics on company, that we explore the possibility of going to court and take some action against some of these companies. Because you have companies where you have an agreement with them to install and to maintain, and we have more downtime than we have working time. Not to mention the fact that they spend more time not stocking the, the, the tools here, the, the parts, they stock it abroad, which essentially is shifting the risk to the patient and to the hospital and to the health system, rather than them taking on that risk by having parts here so that they can provide when we have downtime. So invariably you have these three week, one month, two months wait because a part has to be manufactured in Germany and so on. And I think it's unfair. And I think we have to now take a collective position on this and I've instructed that. So the real reason for Victoria Jubilee not up and running is because we have been not been able to get the central air system working. And that is a direct function of the technical capacity which is outsourced to provide that support. And I'm not shifting the blame here because I'm not pleased about it. All lies will be exposed. That's all. And, 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 and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. No, I'm a fear person. How long have you been having this difficulty in sourcing these these um, equipments? And at what point in between the time that you had this issue did it dawn on you? Wait a minute. What you're saying now, you should actually implement. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the the, the audience this question. How long do you think? It's going to take him to implement what he's just talking about right now. How long you think he's going to fix this? How long you think it's going to take? Just before election day? How long y'all think? Y'all think they're going to find the means necessary to make sure it happens before election day? How many y'all think that that is what's going to happen? If you think that's what's going to happen... Put a one in the chat. If you think it's going to take them until close to election for that to be fixed, put a one in the chat. If you think it's never going to be fixed, put a two in the chat. All right. 70 more years. Somebody said forever. Somebody said six months. Damn. No confidence, Mr. Tufton. No confidence in you, sir. But it is a reality that we're going to have to face, which we are working on through the, some of these service level agreements. Uh, the second question about not just about St. Elizabeth. Remember, you, you've answered the question while still asking on St. Elizabeth, which is fine. As I said in my response, it is not unique to Southern region. There are other areas, as you have mentioned, that have a similar issue. And the team would have picked up St. Elizabeth, and I'm sure something is happening. I just did not anticipate this question to give you the specifics. Some of those questions may be more personal um, and some of the other things that we're doing. But I can get some more specifics on that. And then the, the four delay model, you, you misinterpreted my response. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt that it was a misinterpretation because my response was clear that the, the, the primary cause of mortality would be one and four. So one meaning late appearance at these the health institutions. And then of course, the treatment that were received when you had late, late appearance. This is from my answers. So both two may be connected because if you if the risk is higher, yes. 
Yes, I was actually quoting from your presentation by documents from the Ministry of Health, right. which clearly indicated that level four was the greater of the, greater the two. Of the two. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. But the point I'm making is, which is, is probably logical to deduce, that if you come in and present late, you automatically qualify as a higher risk pregnancy. And they, they, therefore the risk of the worst happening, unfortunately, happens. So you tend to move the numbers up even with the hospital care because of late presentation. So it's a matter of prevention versus cure, and I think we have to do more. Uh, which leads me to the last question that uh, the opposition leader raised about training high schoolers. It's a, it's a very delicate balance, yes. very delicate balance, and I'll tell you why. You know, sex education in the school system is, is fraught with controversy because you mean like your sex education on the off on the website where people are telling us if take down because it was inappropriate and as some local colorful community type of vibes thing they depend on it you mean like that the sex education there? <laughs> hey mighty god there is an interpretation which i'm sure you do not intend uh that we are at a stage of young teens 15 16 maybe 17 um, teaching them about having children and maybe encouraging them to have children. Now, there are, there are arguments to support uh, a discussion around taking care of yourself and family planning and that sort of thing, but you have to be very careful that we don't appear to be promoting, even with the declining population, and you have heard my comments on that, saying to young people, who some of whom are below the age of consent, that, that they must ensure that they go to the health center when they are pregnant almost insinuating that somehow we are enhancing or supporting uh, early determination of that activity and that fact because that could be quite counterproductive as you would ap appreciate thank you minister uh, house leader we have gotten to the end of questions and answers to questions members has been a long session let me just finish up house leader motions that may be made at the commencement of public business requiring notice we have none motions relating to the sitting of the house motions for leave to introduce bill all right so that are the part with christopher tufton and i have to say after listening i am no more confident in the healthcare system than i was when i started watching this particular segment i just heard a whole bunch of promises and nothing tangible I just there's no I don't have no confidence in the healthcare system my mom said to me years ago you know say um, said um, don't go to the hospital stay away from the hospital I'm talking about years ago stay away from the hospital she is like she foresee all of this stuff, bro. It really like she just literally saw what was coming years down the line without seeing it. I don't know, bro. She been warning me for take care of yourself. Do not go to the hospital. Jamaica is at that point where I think every single member that is a well-thinking Jamaican, if you're not going to a private doctor or private uh, clinic or whatever and you don't have your money you don't have insurance you literally should be afraid because you might go there for a pain in your leg and you would leave out well you might not leave out in some cases it is that bad it is that bad you know what I'm saying yo y'all going crazy in the chat man boy y'all really don't like this man Strawberry did. Hey, Ian Ewers, first time seeing in the chat. So, what I'm saying, he is so lie, he don't remember the lie. He <laughs> Marsha K, salute to you. <laughs> Yo, I love the interactions with the with my day ones and the new people. Like, that's dope, man. That's dope. Blessed said, it's not going to fix, man. Blessed child. Oh boy, you know, I hope for the best because at the end of the day, guess what? The Jamaicans are the one that's going to suffer, right? So I hope it gets fixed. Marva Average, they they don't have no confidence in him. Eon Ewers, they don't have no confidence in you, Mr. Tufton. Alright, so that's that. 
that's that uh on on oh that's that on that end ladies and gentlemen but there's something else from this video that i have to react to guys remember like share and subscribe all right yeah tell me what you think about the q and a with, with with christopher tufton and them like i left the, i left this entire thing like huh did i hear anything that's a solution like it's just promises hopes nothing tangible i didn't hear it i didn't somebody please correct me if i'm wrong all right and i'm i'm open to correction all right i don't know man y'all tell me what y'all think man. <laughs>